In this video, we're going to look at what it means for a sequence of real numbers to converge to a limit. Maybe we already have some intuitive idea about what this means. Perhaps we'd like to say that a sequence converges if, as we go further and further along the sequence, the terms get nearer and nearer to some value which we call the limit of the sequence. Well, that's about right, but before we can start working with this idea mathematically, we need to write down precisely what we mean when we say that a sequence converges. In other words, we need a definition. So let an be a real sequence and let l be a real number. Now here's the definition of convergence. The statement, the sequence an converges to l, means that given any positive number epsilon, there exists an integer k such that for all numbers n greater than or equal to k, we have that the distance between a n and l is less than epsilon. Well, that looks a bit unpleasant at first sight, but with a little bit of practice, we'll soon get used to working with it. So let's look through that definition one more time. We're saying that the sequence a n converges to l if, given any positive number epsilon, however small epsilon is chosen, we can find a large integer k such that from the kth term onwards, we have that the distance between our terms of our sequence and the number l is less than epsilon. One thing to note is that this integer k is allowed to depend on epsilon. And to emphasize this, we might write k as a function of epsilon. We call the number l to which the sequence converges the limit of the sequence. Now we're going to look at a graphical illustration of what it means for a sequence to converge to a limit. Here is a plot or a graph of some particular sequence a n. So this first cross, the height of this cross, represents a1, the first term in my sequence. This cross represents a2, this one a3, and so on. In reality, there should be infinitely many terms in my sequence. So this graph should extend infinitely far to the right. But even looking at this finite plot, we see that as n increases, the terms of the sequence are starting to settle down near to this value, l. So what would it mean to say that the sequence converges to l? Well, we need to look back at our definition. This tells us that for all positive epsilon, there should be an integer k such that from the kth term onwards, the distance between the terms of the sequence and l is less than epsilon. So let's look at the interval of real values that lie within a distance epsilon of the number l. So that's these values on this axis here. Then we extend this out to give a strip of width to epsilon centered around this number l. We see that some of the terms of the sequence lie outside the strip. For example, this term and this term, while other terms of the sequence lie inside the strip. For example, this one. For the sequence to converge, there needs to be an integer k such that from the kth term onwards, all the terms of the sequence lie within this strip. In this example, we can take k of epsilon to be equal to 8. Because from the eighth term onwards, the terms of the sequence all lie within a distance epsilon of the number l. But this on its own isn't enough to show that the sequence converges to L. We've just looked at one choice of epsilon, 
but the definition says that this should work for any choice of epsilon, however small. So let's go back to our illustration and choose a smaller value. Let's call it epsilon prime. So we look at the interval of real values which are within a distance epsilon prime of the number L. So that will be this interval of values here within a distance epsilon prime of L. And again, we extend that out to give a strip of width to epsilon prime centered on L. Now this strip is narrower than the strip we had a moment ago, and we see that some of the terms which lay inside the wider strip are now outside the narrow strip. For example, this term A12. But we can still find an integer k, and in this case we can take k of epsilon prime to be 13, such that from this term onwards, the terms of the sequence lie within this new narrower strip. The important point about convergent sequences is that however tiny we choose epsilon, or however narrow a strip we draw, if we go far enough along the sequence, then eventually all the remaining terms lie within this narrow strip, or in other words, they lie within a distance epsilon of the limit L. So now we're going to do an example where we use the definition to show that a given sequence converges to a limit. So our task is to show that the sequence given by a n equals e to the minus n converges to zero. So the first few terms of this sequence are e to the minus one, e to the minus two, e to the minus three, and so on. Our task seems a reasonable one because we know that the exponential of a large negative number gets very close to zero. But we need to show that this sequence satisfies the definition of what it means for a sequence to converge to zero. So we need to show that, given any positive epsilon, we can find an integer k such that for all numbers n at least as big as k, the distance between a n and zero is less than epsilon. Since we have to show that something holds for all positive epsilon, the first line of our answer will be let epsilon greater than zero be given. So now I'm going to tell you how we're going to choose this integer k, and then in a moment I'll explain how I knew which value to choose. So we will take k, and here k will depend on epsilon, to be an integer that's greater than log of 1 over epsilon. Then we think back to the definition and what we're trying to show, and we look at all numbers n greater than or equal to k, and we look at the distance between a n and 0. Well here, a n is equal to e to the minus n, which is positive, so this is just equal to e to the minus n but n is greater than or equal to k, so this will be less than or equal to e to the minus k. Now the reason I chose k in the way that I did is precisely to make this last expression less than epsilon. So by choosing k greater than log of 1 over epsilon, e to the minus k will be less than e to the minus log of 1 over epsilon. And this last term is just precisely equal to epsilon. So I've shown that by choosing n large enough, the distance between a n and 0 is less than epsilon. 
and this works for any positive epsilon. So we've shown that the sequence satisfies the definition of what it means for a sequence to converge to zero. And so now we can say that the sequence an does indeed converge to zero. We'll do some more examples similar to this one in another video.